Hi there. Guess what? I have a treat for you tonight. We're making a Gerson approved pizza. Yes, pizza. And it's only three ingredients, so it can't get much easier than that. It's going to start with a cup of oatmeal, a cup of grated potato, and this is what I did. Now, this is cooked potato that's left over. I had it in the refrigerator. I always keep the leftover potatoes in my refrigerator. You never know when you might need a snack. And they're so easy to grate. You just take your potato. Now, this is, I used a half. You can see. Look how easy that grates. Just slides right down. And that's what I use. So I have a cup of grated potato to go into our pot. There we go. And then a half a cup of awesome sauce. And this is the recipe from YouTube that I make. It's got butternut squash and tomatoes. And I've been playing with the recipe. I added two small beets to it and it came out a lot redder this time and it still has that nice flavor. So there's, there's our three ingredients that go into making our pizza crust. It's going to have a very nice um, Italian flavor to it. You can see how I'm just mixing and squeezing. A lot of mixing and squeezing. So I'm going to work on this and we'll come back. All right, I've mixed this for about a minute and it just really all came together. And you can see how it was very easy to clean, clean up the bowl and it's, it's nice and sticky now. So what we're going to do, I've got my pan here and I've got wax paper. I'm going to put it on my wax paper. And I'm just going to pat this out. I'm just going to keep rolling and patting until we have a 10 inch circle. So I'll work on this and we'll come back. So there we go. You can see, look at how nice and smooth that ends up. It's, it's lost its stickiness. I'm able to just kind of keep spreading, spreading and rolling it out to the size that we want. And that looks like a pretty good size. I'd say it's about a quarter inch thick. Now to put it on our pan, we're going to want to sprinkle it first. I should have done this before I got my hands all goopy. But just like when we do our half-baked potatoes, I'm going to sprinkle it quite liberally with onion powder. And that just kind of helps dust the pan a little. They use cornmeal when they do pizzas in a pizza place. And I'm just using uh, ground coriander for another spice. You can use rosemary or sage or thyme or garlic powder, whatever sounds good to you. I just... That's a new herb for me, so I've been using that. Now the pan is ready. What we do is we just pick up the wax paper. I'm letting it rest over my arm a little bit. And I'm just gonna come over and drag it onto the pan. And it's great, I can position it using the wax paper. I, you know, I can slide it around, make it sure it got in there. And I'm not gonna pat it down firmly or anything. I'm just gonna let it rest in there. I don't want it to get too stuck to the pan, although it sticks a little, but It'll come up. Look at how nice that is. I just peeled that off. And this is a gluten-free pizza crust that you can make for people who are gluten-free as well because of the oatmeal. So there you go. It's ready to go in the oven. 45 minutes at 350. All right, my timer went off. It's been 45 minutes. I took a peek. It looks real good. And it's just the way you want it. It's, it's gotten a little bit dark around the edges. It's nice and dry. And it's, it's stuck on pretty good, isn't it? Oh, okay, there it goes. Okay, I got one spot here that seems a little stuck, but the rest of it pretty good. Ah, there we go. There, perfect. That wasn't too bad. I just want you to see what the bottom, bottom's a little bit golden brown. Very nice. And there's, it'll work with a pizza cutter. But now I want to um, mention to you the toppings that we can put on. You can use um, any vegetables that we can normally eat. I have a roasted golden pepper. It was a sweet pepper that I roasted earlier today. I have some chopped raw red pepper. You can use green pepper. I have some chopped raw onion. 
This is actually baby chard, baby red chard. Um, you don't want to use spinach because you can't have it raw, but you could have a little cooked spinach if you want. But this is chard that I'm using. Uh, you can have uh, tomato. I was all out of tomatoes. I used mine up, so I don't have. I would have put tomatoes on. And then I have the yogurt, and I have some more awesome sauce. Now, I did not bake this with a sauce because sauce is going to make it too moist. We needed our, our crust to get some body to it to dry dry out a little bit. If you want to put sauce on it now and put it back under the broiler for a minute, you're welcome to do that. Um, I like it. Because we put the sauce in the crust, I don't miss the flavor of the sauce on top of it. Instead, what I like to do is use the yogurt for my sauce. So I just take a little scoop of that. Now this is just a nice, no fat organic yogurt. This is my favorite way of doing it. You could always put more awesome sauce on if you wanted to, but I like it with the yogurt because this is my cheese. I'm putting the the cheese flavor with the dairy of uh, the yogurt on there. Now, if you're in the, to the if you're in the point in Gerson where you're not allowed to have dairy yet, well then I would suggest you go ahead and use more sauce. Use your awesome sauce on there. One of the things that's nice, I know I use awesome sauce in a lot of my recipes now, but it just adds uh, more flavor. And one of the things that makes it nice is the the butternut squash helps balance out the flavor of the tartness of the tomato so you don't need to add any sugar to it. It just gives it a nice flavor. So there's our there's our sauce, our yogurt sauce, and I'm going to just sprinkle on a little bit of everything because I love all these yummy toppings on there and we'll put some of this chard on. That'll be good. I've not tried it with chard yet. This looks exciting to me. Pretty color. And let's get the rest of that. And then I can put some of that roasted pepper on there too. I've not tried it with roasted pepper before either. This is something new. Now we, you know, pre-Gerson, when we went to restaurants for pizza, there was some that put figs and uh, balsamic vinegar on, you know, like a, like a glaze. If you're into fancy pizzas, you can do that. Now, if, if it, uh, would taste better to you to warm those ingredients up. You can always pop it under the broiler, but I found I I really enjoy it just the way it is. I don't I don't need it warmed up because the heat of the pizza really warms warmed the sauce up, and I I don't mind having the crunchy toppings on there. But that's up to you. That's you see my pan. I can touch it already. Ooh ooh, and I forgot my most favorite topping of all. I gotta go grab it. It's in the refrigerator. I don't want you to miss out on that. That's my favorite. All right, let me grab that quick. Here we go. This is flaxseed oil that I grated raw garlic in. And my favorite pizza used to be a white pizza, which meant it didn't have red sauce. It had uh, olive oil and garlic on it and then the cheese. Well, our yogurt's underneath. That's our cheese. And what I'm and it's and because the yogurt was cool when I put it on there, it's actually cooled this off already. So you can put your your flax oil with a little garlic and do that as a drizzle on there. Mmm. Yum yum yum. There we go. Oh, that looks good. I think we need to test it. Oh, what have we got there? Got the pepper and the Swiss chard onion and the roasted pepper, a little garlic and oil. Mmm. 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 And look at that. You can pick it up, it holds together. It tastes good. Mmm. And it has a nice chew. It's not crumbly. I used to try to make gluten free crusts years ago. In fact, I used to teach gluten free cooking. And the crusts weren't very nice. This is this is much nicer, and it's still gluten free. Mmm, delicious. You're gonna love it. So, I'll I'll post the recipe. At the well, you've seen it. The recipe was at the beginning of the video, and I'm stuck. I can't think of anything else right now. Enjoy, enjoy your pizza. Give me some suggestions um, as to what you might put on top of your Gerson pizza. Thank you. Have a good night.